my internet connection is good yes so my friends welcome you all understanding knowledge awareness experience plus reasoning that is how the eastern wisdom says they all go together they have to go together i have an experience without which i cannot explain logically it falls short of the truth i put logic and i don't have any experience that is also not the knowledge and understanding that is that has to be made clear we should put the reasoning we should find the laws logic means cause and effect relationship <clears throat> so the time comes when we see there is an ultimate cause why it is an ultimate cause you cannot find any other cause behind it that ultimate cause is the pure consciousness and that is what the real self is so then we allow the mind to move into that state all the time when it moves all the time we live think and speak out of the peace happiness love and wisdom that is what is the journey of the Eastern wisdom, especially for those who are higher level of the seekers. So this master always communicates with us that understand. So what happens, you know, by understanding, you get rid of the many impurities. Uh, one time listening, no constant listening until the mind changes, until we reach to a state of awareness where we see, yes, I have found it. I have found it. Eureka. So that is what I have taken of the chapter number six. And there is one metaphor. And he explains in detail that this metaphor, if we understand it, we apply it in our daily life, we will be there in the highest state of mindfulness. You know DUI, now we all know a DUI in America, huh? driving under influence. Uh, sure, driving under influence of alcohol. And blood alcohol content. Normally the cops find out, they find out point, you know, point zero eight percent here or higher something 0.01% or higher, something they have. <clears throat> so in the morning, I was just, it flashed into my mind. So we also have MIC, mental ignorance content, instead of BAC. <laughs> so it just came to my mind. And then what about DUI? It is living under ignorance. <laughs> LUI. So, how much I have MIC, huh? mental ignorance content, and LUI, living under ignorance. So, who notices? Who catches me? Find out who catches me. Your relations, your friends, your honey, the entire world, the way you think, speak, and act in the world. You blame someone, I am alarmed if someone comes to me and blames. Huh? Living under ignorance. <laughs> so you see that you have to understand that part. That is causing you because the moment you start blaming and complaining, your ignorance, mental ignorance content is going to increase sooner or later. And then ultimately you are going to suffer. And that is why the first treasure out of the six treasures, Sama will not enter into your life so just you know it was it was just for the sake of understanding remember mental ignorance content how much it is greater it is you have a problem of 
tiredness and fatigue and anxiety and duality and blame and complain and reaction. So you are living under ignorance. Ignorance is the cause of the sorrow. So go back to our metaphor. So this master plays with the metaphor in the entire journey of reaching to that state of awakening even by listening and understanding. So he says there is an infinite space, infinite boundless space that has no division. This represents singular undivided consciousness. That is we are. We are consciousness. That is the real self. But what we feel? We feel a ghatakasha. It is Sanskrit known as ghatakasha or English translation is pot space. The space enclosed within a pot. This represents the consciousness reflected in the body. Consciousness reflected in the body. Through my eyes, through my fingers and I'm talking and you're listening. Consciousness is reflected in that pot space. Or you can say the body contained within consciousness. Why I say body contained within the consciousness? Because the space is outside and the space is inside. I believe you got it. Now you put the water into that pot space. The space reflected in the water contained in a pot. So there is a space. If you put the water, the space is also reflected in that water. This consciousness reflected in the mind. That is the reflected consciousness. That is our mind in which the thought occurs, in which all the thought, blame, complain, praise, pleasure, pain occurs. And then in the same way, we have Megha Kasha, the cloud space. So that cloud represents the entire world is reflected in the in the consciousness. So let us see the correlation with our daily living. So first is the infinite space, the endless space that contains all the galaxies in the universe, no limit, no boundary to this space. That pervasive space that exist both within and without, within and without, all the manifestations. That is what we can say the Supreme Consciousness. All the religions talk about it in a different form. They are the gods and goddesses. It is not confined. That is why we say it is all pervaded. That is why we say it is omniscient, omnipresent, etc. It's a long list. Now, the space within the part means the consciousness within this body-mind complex is the individual consciousness. What a great uh, metaphor. The finite space contained within a clay pot. The walls of the pot limits and enclose the space within. So I identify with the body and mind. I say that I'm sitting here. I'm not there at your house. I'm not with you. So it is happening because of superimposition of this body-mind complex. The space inside one's body, which hosts the breath, the vital energies, the organs, the space seems separate. The space inside me seems separate due to the limiting container of the physical body. But the fact is that it is not. So th these are the two, at the micro level, at the macro level. So at the micro level, we say we are the real self. At the macro level, we say we are one with the supreme consciousness. It is the same. There is no difference. Uh, we are just understanding the metaphor. I have to repeat it because I need to repeat it so that you remember. Now the third contains, the third and the fourth are delusion. We have to remove this delusion. That is why he says there is a metaphor. The pot space remains the pot space. But if you put the water, it becomes a water space. So that is what the reflected mind is. That is what the mind is. Through the mind, I see you. I 
blame and complain you. I say you are crazy, you are good, you are bad. But otherwise, that pot space does not change at all. So that is what the water space is. So space that appears to be captured, the space that appears to be captured within that pot space, vessel of water, the reflection makes space seems bounded. So that is what the mind is, the space reflected in the surface of the mind, which creates appearance of the thoughts, emotions, memories, uh, feeling, etc. So that is what the, creates the ignorance. The same way, at the individual level, it is the water space. At the universal level, it is the cloud space. In that cloud space, we see the people, objects, buildings, skyscrapers, our house, my house, your car, my car, long list. So now we see that out of the four spaces, so called the spaces, there is only one space. Similarly, I see that you have an individual consciousness, I have an individual consciousness. It is because of the ignorance. So I have to understand where is the ignorance and how to get rid of that ignorance. So that I can see that it is the same consciousness in you and the me. It is not only same, but it is only one. It is only one. So my friends, if your MIC is 90%, not possible. Not possible to understand. Even if you say intellectually, I have understood. <laughs> In the last session with the Danish group, you know, one uh, yeah, one person says that, no, I have intellectually, I understand, but I don't experience it. <clears throat> Your mental ignorance content is 90%. At least 10% you intellectually understand. And you are living under the influence of ignorance. That is what I say, L-U-I, living under, huh? living under ignorance. <laughs> what comes the next question? The next question comes, the why purity of the mind, discernment and discussion are required to use logic on the path of the self discipline i cannot use the right logic if i don't live in discernment and discussion ask the question why we have gone asking the question you know the science always asks the question what what is the process what is the mechanism we always ask the question, what? So if you get lost in the process, then you cannot find the real self. The process demands change. And what is constantly changing cannot be the real self. So we have a different approach. So well, go ahead. Purity of the mind, having a clear and uncluttered mind allows one to think and reason without any distortion and biases. That is what we do in experimental, you know, like the research experiment in the science. Unbiased, we, we, we choose those who have studied science, they know we choose a fixed variable. We have huh, those in under the protocol. We have a research protocol. Huh? Jerry uh, must be aware, and yes, Christina is aware who have studied science or those who have studied science. So, because we need a totally uncluttered mind to think, reason without any distortion and biases. Reason without any distortion and the biases. That is important. Discernment. Why we need a discernment? the ability to distinguish truth from the false, wisdom from the folly. 
So what happens as you continue the journey, you are listening and learning, your discernment sharpens your capacity for reasoning, right reason. Otherwise, you cannot put a right reason. So we are always, we don't uh, uh, care too much, you know, if you are putting a right reasoning, a wrong reasoning. We just avoid it. We leave. We move on. The discernment provides the clarity. Now, what about the discretion? Not being attached to a preconceived notion or outcomes. Discretion allows one to logically examine ideas objectively, without bias, without prejudice. That is why I explained to you about the MIC and LUI. And in order to live in the discernment and discretion, I need to have a minimum, minimum self-discipline, an ability of a self-observation, ability of self-observation. Not normally I observe everyone. This guy is so crazy. This guy is so good. This guy is good because he or she is helping me. So I'm already under the influence. Do you see that? We need that, we need that kind of a purity of the mind. The self-discovery requires an objective self-observation, a rational analysis, and a truthful conclusion. Purity of the mind, discernment, and discretion provides that mental clarity. And that is why we have to continue the practice. Distorted thinking only leads to illusion about oneself. We are, again, mental ignorance content increases, and then there is no way. Yesterday, this guy called me, and he said, you know, I have a girlfriend, and whose friend, who also met me a couple of times, told my girlfriend that uh, this this guy is crazy. And I got into fear. You see, the mental ignorance content is too much. What I have to do? But I have to do with it. Why I have to do with it? Because I have attached to my girlfriend. If someone says to my girlfriend that you are crazy, so then I have a fear, I will lose my girlfriend. You see how the mind stretches its biases. How much the mind stretches its biases. Unnecessary. It distorts my perception. It distorts my perception. Logic is a tool that requires a clear, focused, and unbiased mind to wield effectively for self-discovery. Now what happens, the non-seeker does not realize the importance. We, we should understand. So you have to analyze again and again. First, well, who is the non-seeker who does not have a, there's a lack of exposure to this journey of self-discovery. The first thing we have to understand that we have two eyes. One is the false eye and one is the real eye. The false eye is responsible for all my stress, suffering, duality, conflict, blame, complaint. <clears throat> and the real self is full of peace, happiness. So if I'm not exposed to it again and again, 23 hours you are exposed to that another world, world of a non-seeker. Hardly one or two or three hours you are exposed with the teacher. And after that, who knows how much... Uh, time I spent living into that state of discernment and discretion. So there's a lack of exposure in the life of a non-seeker. And second is that I focus too much on the outer life. I give this example. That guy who attended the session on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, he, but he's a wonderful guy. You know? His heart is so good. But at the same time, he lives with that uh, mental ignorance content, under the influence of ignorance. 
And then you have a fear, then you, you know, I didn't, uh, I could not sleep all night. Why? Because I have a fear of loss of my girlfriend. Unnecessary. This is what we live as a life of non seeker So we focus too much on the outer life. Too much on the outer life. We are not engaged in introspection. So what happens? I focus on outer life. It builds my ego. Then I start identification with the. You see the process of that. I fall into ignorance. I live under the influence of ignorance too much. So we we don't notice it we, because we don't inquire. We don't put a logic. So I focus on too much on the outer life, and then there is an identification with the ego. A non-seeker strongly identifies with one's personality, desires, and aversion. The ego feels threatened by the idea of a purified discernment and dispassion. Do you see that? Just see the relationship, how it works. Lack of self-reflection. So what is the ultimate result? You see, we started lack of exposure. And the second point we did, uh, uh, we we focus on the outer life too much. We, I don't see who am I instead of I focus. Who am I with reference to my possessions, with my relations, so called? Uh, how much how much influence I have on social media content and long list? You you can figure out. So that is because of the identification with the ego, and now it is the fourth step. Now. I lose the self-reflection. I don't reflect myself. Who am I? So with no practice of self-examination, a non-seeker may feel no need to work on purifying the mental content. So my mind remains pure, impure. And my mind remains impure. Then even while listening at this moment, you may be into anxiety. What the heck you are talking? I don't understand. It does not make a sense. It will happen to your mind. No, I'm not saying that it is happening to your mind, but I'm saying if it happens to the mind, <laughs> if obviously you are not a seeker. Am I logical? I'm just trying to be logical and clear. I'm just giving you the uh, entire process. That is what happens. Mental ignorance content I'm talking about. Am I see? <laughs> Not BSC. <laughs> that BSC remains, you know, just once a while, you could maybe in a week or so. But this remains all the time. The problem is this. It remains all the time. <clears throat> and then what happens? <clears throat> now you have a lack of self-reflection. Now what happens? Now the Fear creeps in in your life. There is a fear of the unknown. And that is why I gave an example of this guy. No, no, I, I'm totally scared, you know, because, you know, her, you know, my girlfriend's friend told me that I'm crazy. And uh, you see that? So there is a fear of the unknown. See, look into these fears enters into our life. And there is a fear of the unknown. Profound self-inquiry can be daunting and disorienting for the uninitiated who are not exposed to this journey. That is why, you know, I have different programs, you know, for different groups of the people. I don't talk about it. Cognitive, then what is the result? You can say the cognitive fault. Can I use the word cognitive ability, cognitive disability? The principles of the purity, discernment, and dispassion contradict how most non seekers conduct themselves. And ultimately, we have a lack of role model in our daily life and ultimately we continue to suffer from the the time we wake up until we <clears throat> fall into sleep and the next day is also the same then we live into the world 
of ignorance and we say the entire world is responsible for my suffering. Unless I do this initial preparation, there is no way, there is no way I can reach to a successful state, permanent state of mindfulness. What should I do? <clears throat> I should use the proper use of the logic. I'm coming to the same topic, reasoning. Logic, 50% logic, 50% experience, let them merge together, or clarity in the reasoning, clarity in our my experience. I gave an example last time. I have a constant experience in the desert of the Miraz water. But if I don't examine, I will have a blind belief about the Miraz water. So I need to examine. Same thing with ignorance. Same thing with MIC, LUI. <laughs> huh? Mental ignorance content and living under, you can use both living under the influence of ignorance or living under the influence, living under ignorance directly. LUI. What should I do? Scrutinize my past experiences through logic and reasoning. Avoid dismissing profound and confusing experiences. I may have beautiful and wonderful experiences. I should not dismiss it. Let me inquire. Let me inquire. I have an experience of rainbow. Rainbow does not exist. It's a profound experience. Same way, the guy comes home you hate and you have a hallucinative experience. This guy is going to kill me, hate me. J just you have an idea that he hates me. That is how we live our daily life. We identify limiting belief. We have to identify those limiting beliefs in our self-inquiry. If we don't do it, it will not happen. We have to balance logic with openness and discernment. I'm coming to the main topic, you know. And they learn. So why, when we learn compassionate self-examination from a mentor and a teacher, compassionate self-examination, what that means? That, that something a teacher may say, it may hurt you. But you have to keep your heart aside. You have to put a logic. You have to understand it. No, no, this is what happened to me. Let me follow this path. Let me keep aside my heart. So that is known as the compassionate self-examination from a teacher. Have patience with the logical analysis. You have to repeat that same logical analysis again and again and again. And if you repeat it, you will find that your mind is clear. So I have to integrate logic with my intuition that results into an experience of the real self without any practice. So a Saturday session, even though we practice, so-called non-practice, and still it is. That is the basis. Now, <clears throat> now the secret. Not secret, it is an open secret. <laughs> So what is knowledge of an object and self-knowledge? I touched upon it last week. I'm not going, so we are going to go a little deeper. There is an important distinction between knowledge of an object and knowledge of the real self. So when you are a seeker, when you live in the discernment and discretion, you can easily identify and distinguish between the knowledge of an object. I'm saying knowledge of an object, knowledge of a mouse, knowledge of a computer, knowledge of a house, and knowledge of a self. One is the objective knowledge, another is the subjective knowledge. There's a big difference. There's a huge difference between the two. The subjective knowledge is the knower, perceiver, feeler. Seer and the objective knowledge is the known, any object that I know. I know you, you are an object for me. The one who is, knows you is the knower. That is the subjective knowledge. 
It can only be cleared when we live in the path of discernment and discretion. It will never happen. Otherwise, the mind will have a biased and preference, preferred attitude. Are you getting it? Knowledge about historical events, understanding the concept of the science, information about the places, people, ideas, objective knowledge, knowledge of skills, system, and the processes, knowledge of the computer. <clears throat> what is self knowledge? Understanding the components of one's subjective experiences. And what are those components? My thoughts, my emotions, my perception. I love you, emotional content. I hate you, emotional content. This is different from knowing, uh, having a knowledge of the mouse and uh, computer, and it's no, 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 it doesn't work there. I have to, I have to distinguish, I have to discern. Knowing the difference between permanent self and the temporary aspects that makes up my personality. I say, you are wonderful. That is the part of my personality. I say, you are crazy. That is also a part of personality. But behind that, there is a consciousness. That is my real life. I miss that real life. Then I engage myself in attachment and aversion. And then my thought pattern and emotions and the feeling passes throughout the day. And I start living into that level of ignorance. Do you, you know, not do I, L U I, M I C. So I lose insight into the nature of the consciousness. I am just only aware of the content of that consciousness. The content of the consciousness is not me. I am the consciousness. And I lose my direct experiential knowledge of one's true essence and being. That is why the master remembered, never forget these, the metaphor at the four level we have, as if we have four consciousnesses. No. The master proves that we are on, there is only one consciousness, and that consciousness is me. Let us go a little deeper. What is knowledge of an object in this self-knowledge? I made it very clear. And from once you understand, then we have to understand how we communicate in our daily life. What is the difference between the object of knowledge and subject of knowledge? Are you understanding object of knowledge? Mouse of knowledge, object, and self of knowledge. Little deeper, but not very deep. The object of knowledge refers to like computer, flower, home, person, which are known. It is not in the field of a knower. Remember what it means. The subject of knowledge is the knower. Are you getting it? You have to, even if you don't get it, you have to listen to it and you have to repeat yourself. For example, I know Flower, David, I know Dennis, I know Stephen, I know Jerry, I know Terry. Objects are different, but I know is the same. Are you getting? I know David, I know Christina, I know Ashok, I know Computer, but that I know is common, I know is the same. That I know is the knowledge in consciousness. Under the influence of MIC, we forget this and we live in ignorance. It is here and now. It is not there and then. It is here and now. We are into that state. We are because we are consciousness. By practice, you your mind says it will i will achieve in the future it means it is not present here it is already present here that is why we say it is a non-practice <laughs> do you see that what i said i know david i know jerry i know stephen that i know is common so now let us examine what is this i know without consciousness i know cannot be explained Cannot exist. So I know is the knower, 
that nor is the consciousness and that is the knowledge. I cannot have a false, I cannot have an ignorance if I don't have a knowledge. When I say you are telling a lie, I can only say you are telling a lie with reference to the truth. Are you understanding? If there is no truth, how can I say you are telling a lie? So when I say there is a false lie, the false lie is based on the real lie. <laughs> there is a false. And that real lie is always there. Sometimes false lie is there, sometimes it is not. Or sometimes it has different level. I told you, MIC, LUI. <laughs> How much influence we have of ignorance based on that we create. So knowledge of objects takes place now one of the greatest understanding, very deeper understanding, very clear understanding. What is that? I will, I will repeat it a couple of times. Knowledge of an object takes place in the subject. Example, I know mouse. So knowledge of the mouse takes place in the subject. Knowledge of that mouse does not take place in the mouse. Mouse does not say, okay, thank you very much. Now you know that I'm the mouse. Are you, are you sure? Are you getting it? Very subtle, but not very subtle. It's very easy to understand. Knowledge of the object takes place in the subject only. What is that subject? That is consciousness. It never happens in the object. The object does not become conscious of itself. I know the computer. Computer does not become conscious and says that, okay, thank you very much. Now you know me. I know not, I say, for example, I know David. Knowledge does not take place in the David. About it takes place in me. It takes place in, in I am. I am the subject. And that subject is nothing but the consciousness. That is the knower. That is the real self. It is here and now. We are in the state of mindfulness here and now. Knowledge of objects takes place in the subject. The subject is consciousness and not in the object itself. The object does not become conscious of itself. A chair does not know itself as a chair. See that? Only a conscious being can know the chair as an object. The chair does not have its subjectivity. Only I have its subjectivity, and that subject is the consciousness, and I'm the pure consciousness. I'm already in the state of meditation. When? Where? All the time. Not here now. All the time. <laughs> that is the journey of the self discovery. That is what this master is bringing out. See, a tree may grow, flower and die, but it does not have an inner knowledge or awareness of itself being a tree. Are you getting? A tree may grow, may become tall, have flower, fruits and die, but it does not have an inner knowledge or awareness of itself being a tree. Only an observing subject. Only an observing subject can know the tree. So when I there is an observing subject, it means I am an observer. I cannot be an observer without being conscious. So I am consciousness. I cannot be the worry in mind. Finish. In order to reach to that state, we have very subtle, gross, millions and trillions of impressions that keeps the mind impure. We need discernment and dispassion. We need to listen to it. We need to be consistent. And the time comes you by understanding only 
you live into that state. A rock lies there as an object, but has no capacity to know itself. The rock is there. We have many rock in Arizona. The rock does not think I am a rock. Only a conscious being can know the rock is a rock. Conscious being. A car functions, but cannot refer back to itself as a subject. It does not say I'm the car. It has no inner feeling of I-ness or the self-awareness. We have the self-awareness. And that is how, because of that self-awareness, I know I am not the body and the mind. That level of self-awareness is missing in the ant, in the mosquito, in the tiger. That's why they do not, they need not to practice yoga. And you do, they, they cannot practice yoga. They cannot follow mindfulness. Only the driver is the conscious subject who can know the car. Take another example. An atom may move and interact, but has no sentience. No sentience. No sentience means inner awareness or inner intelligence to know itself. Only a conscious entity could study and know about that. A conscious entity. When I say I'm conscious of you, because I am consciousness. What is the conclusion? What is the conclusion? Can you make out? Knowledge of David, knowledge of Jerry, knowledge of Christina, knowledge of chair, knowledge of tree. What exactly I, can, I want to convey? I will take up this uh, next week also, but just, I, just I'm giving you, you need to think about it. Knowledge of David, for example, that arises within consciousness. Knowledge of chair, that takes place in the observer. Knowledge of tree, that is taking place here. What I want to say. We refer the knowledge of David, knowledge of the chair, knowledge of car, for the sake of simplicity. Chair do not have the self-knowledge. What it should have been, in a common language, in talk, and then we we create a habit, and then we create an under, false understanding. It is the chair of knowledge. It is not the knowledge of chair. You have to contemplate and reflect this week. And once you clearly understand in your head, it is the chair of knowledge. It is not the knowledge of chair. Knowledge of the chair means the chair contains that knowledge. Knowledge of a tree means the tree contains the knowledge. And the tree of knowledge means knowledge is subject. We made it object. And we missed the whole process. We miss, and then the impurity of the mind, and then we lose the power of discernment, and then ultimately we forget. Then we go under the influence of MIC and LUI, and we live in ignorance all the time. During meditation, it is possible. During meditation, I see the knowledge is here. But once he once we return from the meditation that is lost, ah, knowledge is outside. What is the knowledge? This guy is crazy. Close your eyes. Eyes are closed. Let us see with contemplation and reflection where we land up. Eyes are closed. Now it is knowledge of the eyes or eyes of knowledge. 
if it is eyes of knowledge, there is some consciousness within that is separate from the eyes, and that consciousness through the mind becomes aware that the eyes are closed. <laughs> you speak so fast. No, I'm not speaking very fast. Now I see that I see you are comfortable. Yes, my friend, you are comfortable. It is a comfort of knowledge. That observer is consciousness. That is a knower who is aware. What he is aware? He is aware. That knower is aware of that. Is aware of the comfort experienced in the mind. It is so complex. No, the life is very easy. We made it complex. Why? Master gives the same answer, ignorance. I have already given you uh, different steps, how we fall trap into the ignorance. We are under the influence of the MIC and LUI. <clears throat> Any thought that enters into your mind, any thought, thought of knowledge or knowledge of a thought, find out. If I say knowledge of a thought, thought is a living entity, then thought is a conscious entity. And then I'm lost. Looking the entire body, body of knowledge. Observer is inside, different from the body. And then I say experience, sensation, comfort, and steadiness. It is an experience happening in the mind of the body. But the knowledge takes place not in the body. It is happening in the mind. It is happening in the mind because the consciousness is very near, close to the mind. How can you say it is only close to the mind? Because I have, today I feel stressed, tomorrow I feel good. Day after, I'm happy with you, and again, uh, tomorrow I feel unhappy with you. So these are the characteristics of the mind. Nothing happens to the consciousness. That I am, that I am is not at all affected. That I am is constant. It is the same I am. It is the same I am through the mind experienced. I was frustrated. It is the same I am through the mind. Today feels I'm so good. But that I am did not change. So I have. And uh, that I am needs to be recognized, my friends. A recognition by understanding. What is the recognition? It is your cognitive ability. And once you have a right cognition, you also have an experience of the real self, here and now. You need not to <clears throat> do anything. Let us see how we can translate into a non-practice being carefree. We have done it a couple of times before, but now see how we can do it. Again, when I say how I can do it, it means I have to do the practice now. So here we apply the contemplation and reflection. Do you see that? The, the point we miss, oh, let us see how we can do it. And then our mind moves into the mode of a practice. Then it perceives that it will be in the future. 
that is why we need an extreme purity of the mind. We need an extreme discernment and discretion. I gave you an entire example of the journey of a non-seeker. Lack of exposure, etc., etc., and of identification with the ego. So if those elements are present, I cannot follow that process. Anyhow, be carefree. So now I logically understand. Carefree. Free from all the cares. But who is taking care of me? My mind. How it cares by thoughts, feelings, emotions, experiences, sensation. It retrieves the information. Or it feels now. So now I see who is where is an object and where is the subject. And we 100% know all the thought, feeling, emotions are objects. They cannot be the subject. And the subject is only one. That is I am. <coughs> I am having a crazy thought. I am having a good thought. I am having a thought that you are crazy. I am having a thought that you are good. I am having a thought that I love you. I am having a thought that I hate you. You see? All these thoughts are objects. They are coming and going. They are constantly moving. They are constantly changing. But I am is constant. That is why even the science says thought is a matter. <clears throat> and that I am is the consciousness which is separate from all the thoughts. So you are just aware what that means by aware. You are aware. Here is a subject and here is an object. So you find that there is only one subject. What is that subject is I am. But if you find two subjects, here comes the false eye. And that is what we say the false eye is ego. False eye means that false eye ego does not exist. It appears to exist. What appears to exist is ignorance. Mental ignorance content. How high, how low it is. That will define your success in the journey of the self-discovery. Your I am is there, always there. Sometimes the thoughts are there, sometimes no thoughts, sometimes feeling is there, sometimes no feeling is there. It's okay. It is a part of the journey. So why it is there and it is not there? Because, you know, because... The world is constantly changing. 
in that world of the chains, I'm always available. That I am is not the body mind, that I am is not the thought, that I am is not the hatred, that I am is not the attachment, that I am <coughs> is consciousness. That I am is that can happen only. I told you when we have that purity of the mind. So there is a clear distinction between the object and the subject, first level. And then we have a clear understanding whether it is the knowledge of an object or it is object of knowledge. In uh, Eastern wisdom, that is what we see the cognitive ability. In modern psychology, the cognitive ability is different. It all pertains to the science. It always all pertains to the objective reality. Even though we claim it is a subjective, that is a part of our personality. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. That is, I am, that home is, I am. And there we experience, which that is objective. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences, bring the hands down. We'll share our experiences. Any question, obviously, you're most welcome. How are you, Stephen? Good, thank you, sir. <clears throat> um, 
I, 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 I'm grasping the object and and subject in, in, in all of this, uh, these learnings. Um, today's was this whole focus on knowledge. Um, and, and, and I kept saying to myself that separating and understanding the knowledge that the knowledge comes with, uh, from an unbiased, um, mm. uh, place, um, with eliminating past impressions and interpretations of that knowledge and just accept it as it is. And it really set a tone for my just settling in. I just fell into a very deep meditation of, I, I heard you. I can't tell you what you were saying, but it was just a very calm and relaxing um, non-practice. Beautiful. That's beautiful. How are you, David? Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, similar to Stephen, the, um, just the, the profoundness is the only word I can use to describe it between objective and subjective. And it's like um, my mind was going back and forth between objective and subjective the, the entire meditation. But at some point, kind of like Stephen, I just got deep into the meditation and um, heard the Om Shanti at the end and came out. It was wonderful. So yes. profound. Yes. Profound. It happens because your mind uh, picks up the simple understanding and then it goes deeper and deeper. Then it finds I am is always present. And I am is always present. It has to be a subject. It cannot be an object because object is always changing. But why we claim object is becomes the subject? M I C L U I. How are you, Jerry? <laughs> Remember this every week. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I like your M I C and L U I. That's good. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to use it. <laughs> um, I, the meditation was really deep and the mind, um, the mind doesn't know who I am, I, yeah. but I can use the mind as my instrument and have it very tuned in to who I am. That is the entire summary of today's talk. Mind claims this is my experience, so mind further claims through the thought, which is an I thought, which is a false I, that this is my experience. You hurt me, but the consciousness as such cannot be hurt. That is the real life. But the mind claims I am hurt. Yes. That is a wonderful summary. Yes, Brandy, you can also teach MIC and LUI to your students. If they say, no, I did not understand what you're saying. It is because of this. I can teach it to myself first, though. <laughs> <laughs> I started my meditation with an application of the lesson by saying meditation of knowledge, right? And even just reversing it like that it. was like an indicator of how deep the past impressions are because my mind kept wanting to flip it back I'm like no and then as you know I could just kind of cruise along and as other things came up I would apply that same twist and um it was an interest you know all, all the while like non-practicing but it was an interesting perspective yes yes I because I I'm explaining because the next uh, verse is so deep so I'm laying a foundation for the next verse Otherwise, if I directly speak of the translate the verse, uh, we will not understand it. So you rightly said, you know, that's a beautiful way. Meditation of knowledge or knowledge of meditation. So you juggle around, you contemplate and reflect which one is true. And uh, one that is true will put you into immutable peace and calmness and one that is not true will cause the suffering how are you dennis thank you i'm um, calm quiet and contemplating on the chair of knowledge 
yes, share of knowledge or knowledge of share. Because when I say knowledge of a chair, it is a well accepted norm in every language in the world. So my mind does not need to inquire. So when I don't inquire, I'm already in the, under the influence of an ignorance. No, let me inquire and find out. And when you inquire, there is a profound state of that consciousness is recognized and realized. How are you, Christina? Thank you. Um, today's teaching had a much deeper impact. I could feel almost this boundless, limitless um, connection to the higher consciousness and awareness of the body being perceived as limit yeah and the the breaking up of that ultimately yes yes i i know i can understand that you picked up that unlimited consciousness and closed in the body there we see our limitations and once we are enclosed in our limitations and then there is no end to the mic there is no end to this lui and that is where, you know, we see you are good, I'm bad, and long list comes into our head. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm so appreciative you all, you all are understanding. I will not use the word trying to understand. But that is also a misnomer. So how are you, <laughs> uh, Terry? Uh, uh, to to be in the I am I am is and then there's there's the I am and then there's every everything else is the object and to to be in that awareness yes even for a moment. Yes. Was such a relief. Was so wonderful. Yes. So yeah, yeah. It's so wonderful. You rightly said when I say even this moment, the time is subjective to the mind. The world is objective to the mind. Uh -huh. And there we fall into ignorance because the time is subjective. So my mind says, "This is I am." So it creates a false eye, and then it false eye says, I am 65 years old. <laughs> <laughs> there is no, I am ageless. How are you, Ashok? Thank you, sir. So the meditation was, uh, meditation was good, and uh, I want to know what is the difference between uh, Cognitive ability as per the modern science and uh, what do you call uh, other thing? Ah, simple cognitive ability in modern psychology because they do not see the difference between the mind and the consciousness. Okay. They say it is mental consciousness. Consciousness, they say. Yeah, consciousness and the mind are one, but here. In Eastern wisdom, we say our cognitive ability says that consciousness is not the mind. Okay. So there are still a lot of confusion in modern science as to the seat of consciousness. Someone says the seat of consciousness at the back of my head. Someone says in the front. So there are divers. I think Jerry knows there are divergent views, and Krishna even knows. They both belong to the streams of the science. So, and there are even hundreds of concepts. There were more than 200 psychologists until now. So, they more talk about the objective orientation, behavior, psychology, behavior model. Only one, a little bit, talks about Robert S. Aguirre, who talks about psychosynthetic model. Mm -hmm. So, it, the, perhaps, you know, he must have studied. Otherwise, the prior editor, Jung, you know, they all talk about 
this entire journey is totally different. Is there any word? Uh, Our cognitive uh, ability is consciousness, and that consciousness is I am. In modern psychology, their cognitive ability based on behavior model, personality, attitude, behavior, huh? okay. and characteristics and the traits. And these traits belong to the mind. These traits do not belong to the consciousness. OK. Uh, sir, what uh, is the uh, Hindi mein word? What is the cognitive ability in Hindi? Mein? Uh, he is asking what is the exact Hindi Ah, Samaj. Samaj, okay. Understanding. Ah, yeah, hmm. Hindi word is Samaj. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is all for today. We will meet. Namaste, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste.